Have you ever wanted to emulate another artist without obviously ripping off of them? No one wants to be called a ripoff and no one wants their work ripped off. But what most people don't realize is that you can actually do this successfully without being grimy. And if you do it the right way, it can totally unleash your creativity. In this video, we're gonna explore what Casey Neistat can teach us about how to properly and successfully copy another artist without getting sued or in trouble. Hey, my name is Matt and I'm a street photographer. And on this channel, we talk about street photography and explore the works of other visual artists. Casey Neistat is a filmmaker and OG YouTuber, now with 12 million subscribers at the time of this video, famous for his daily vlogs. But what you might not know is that a lot of his inspiration comes from his brother, Van Neistat. He showed me his computer. It was the first time I ever edited a video. And that first time I ever edited a video was because Van sat me down in front of my computer and showed me how to do it. But the lineage of influence actually goes back further even one more step. Let me introduce you to Tom Sachs. Tom Sachs is the artist who Casey and Van worked for way back before the YouTube days. You might know Tom Sachs for some of his famous works like his Tiffany Glock, Chanel guillotine, space program where he recreated NASA's mission to the moon, or or for my fellow streetwear lovers out there, his Mars Yard collab with Nike that resells for over $6,000 now. Casey and Van created a lot of videos with Tom. Look at the vibe of Tom Sachs's work. Bullet eight, always be knolling. How to knoll. One, scan your environment for materials, tools, books, music, etc., which are not in use. And now look at Casey's work. Organization is everything. It's what separates us from the rest of the animals. And you can start to see the visual and vibe similarities that are there. There's a specific place for everything, always. The studio is a complex and enigmatic working environment full of precise rules and principles. We call these rules and principles the code. But how exactly did Casey Neistat take this influence from his time working with Saks and turn it into his own? The first thing he did was make a smoothie. Like any smoothie, you need a base and ingredients. Milk, strawberries, bananas, whatever. For his smoothie, his films, the base is that handyman DIY vibe of Tom Sachs. Have you ever noticed the way Casey handwrites a lot of things? Take a look at the work of Tom Sachs and how he handwrites everything in his studio and the overall aesthetic of his branding. What Casey does differently here is that he takes this base and adds his own fresh ingredients to it. We can see it in how he stylizes his video titles and text on screen. Casey is always writing with a Sharpie on paper, cardboard, literally whatever he can get his hands on. Before Casey started making this a thing, video titles mostly used professional fonts. And on top of that base, Casey also throws in a bunch of other fruit, veggies, mix-ins in order to make his smoothie unique and different. With that Tom Sachs aesthetic, he also throws in captivating storytelling, his own voice and personality, and professional filmmaking techniques. All these ingredients combine to make something that we recognize uniquely as a Casey Neistat video. But even adding your own flavor or twist on something isn't always enough to differentiate your work from somebody else's. The second thing Casey did was connect the dots. There's a saying in creativity and innovation that goes, any two things are connected by a third. The secret is finding what that third thing is. In other words, that also means you can take two seemingly unrelated ideas, smash them together, and come up with something entirely new. Tom Sachs and his style is tied to mainly sculpture. Instead, Casey took that DIY aesthetic, stamped his personality on it, and applied it to films and videos. Of course, he connected more dots than just that. He went all in on a video format and a platform that were still both very new at the time vlogs, and YouTube. It's an insight and decision that paid off big time. But combining professional filmmaking techniques such as three-act structures and cinematic compositions with vlogs was something never before seen. So just imagine if Casey's videos had none of that Sharpie, get your hands dirty vibe, and everything was formal and more 
professional instead. His videos just wouldn't be the same. But even if you connect separate dots together, you can still see the breadcrumbs or through line that traces back from your work to somebody else's. So the third thing Casey did was steal Tom's glasses, metaphorically. He took the lens from which Tom Sachs viewed his art practice and applied it to his own. Practically, this means stealing someone else's mentalities, their habits, their principles, their points of view, just trying to take the larger picture of how they think about things, see through things, or move about their life. Pretty much like an artist's ethos or spirit. Tom Sachs has a principle. Irrational thoughts must be followed absolutely and logically. You can see that thinking manifest in his art. Who the hell would make a Tiffany branded nine millimeter handgun or recreate the mission to Mars with a one-to-one -one replica of the NASA spaceship and even make a full-on command center. And likewise, who in their right mind would take an entire budget given to them by the world's biggest sports brand and spend it instead on traveling around the world? But Tom Sachs's most important philosophy is this. The reward for good work is more work. If you do a good job at something, ideally something you enjoy or care about, then you're gonna get to do more of it. And that's the real reward of it all, the whole process. You get to do more of what you wanna do. And for Casey, that meant making good videos meant he'd get to make even more videos. Casey began his work making videos in Sax's studio with his brother in the early 2000s. His work there was so good that it led to a deal with HBO in 2008 for $2 million. He then started making videos on YouTube in 2010. Those were so good that they led to brands coming to him, asking him, to make videos for them. Then he started making daily vlogs in 2015, which really blew up and is probably what you know him for. That led to him starting a social media company, which ended up being acquired by CNN for $25 million. And the story continues as Casey has turned something he took from another artist and turned it, transformed it into something entirely his own. If you enjoyed this breakdown, I definitely recommend checking out my other artist breakdowns here.